Hello YouTube. Well this afternoon I've got my new idea manure spreader hooked on to my 180. I hooked on to it and greased it up. The next couple of days are supposed to be kind of nice so I'm going to spend a couple of days hauling manure. But I'm not going to do any video of that. I've made a couple of manure hauling videos and I'm not feeling really compelled to make another one. But that's tomorrow. This afternoon, I've got a fire going in the wood furnace here in the shop. So we're going to uh, poke around my WD-45 engine a little bit. I've got the cylinder head back from the machine shop. I bought new exhaust valves and had them put new exhaust valve seats in grind the exhaust valves and recondition or resurface the the, uh, the head. I'm going to do the intake valves today myself. I have the technology to do that. It's 1940s technology, but I have it. I've mentioned in a previous video that this is not the original engine out of the tractor that I'm working on. This engine is out of another WD-45 that I bought in the late 1980s. Uh, because I wanted a wide front WD to use on the manure spreader because I figured a wide front would go through the snow better. So uh, I bought this tractor and about 30 years ago I did a uh, in frame uh, sleeve, put a sleeve kit in it. It runs well, doesn't burn any oil, so I think, don't think there's anything wrong with the rings, pistons, or sleeves. I'm going to leave those alone. I am going to change the cylinder head. Uh, the biggest problem I've got with this thing is leaks. It's the cylinder head seeps a little bit here, and I don't think I've mentioned this before, but Back 30 years ago, when I overhauled this engine, I put a different head on it. I ended up putting an older head. I think this is a head off of a WC, if I remember right. Now, I don't remember why I did this. I, I assume I had a good reason. I, the other, the head that was on this motor must have been bad because I didn't save it. But anyway, uh, about 25 years ago, when I I uh, saved this uh, D17 head with the thought of someday putting it on this engine and uh, I guess now that's going to come to pass. So uh, I have to pull this head off. I still have a lot of cleaning up to do. I'm going to put new front and rear main seals, all new gaskets. And uh, besides grinding my intake valves today, the one thing I want to get done, I want to flip this over pull the oil pan off it and check the bearings. I, I assume that when I put new uh, sleeves in this thing 30 years ago that I put new rod bearings in it. i sure I would have. I don't remember it. But I don't know if I put new main bearings in this thing or not. So I'm going to flip it over, check the rod and main bearings, see what they look like, uh, put some plastic gauge on there and check the clearances and see if I need to get new uh, rod main bearings ordered. But with the, uh, the valve grinding, I dug out from underneath my bench my valve seat grinder. It's a Thor. And open it up here. I got my stones and other components, I've got the uh, the uh, thing I use here to dress my stones, my uh, grinder motor, and back here in the far corner of the shop, back here amongst all the obsolete parts that I haven't been able to bring myself to get rid of yet is my valve refacer. This is a Van Dorn. Uh, 
Both this and the seat grinder I bought at the same time. I bought these at an auction in the 1980s, back when I was rebuilding a lot of engines, and I used these things quite a lot back then. This, I was trying to remember when the last time I used this, and I can't, so it's been a while. I plugged it in yesterday and checked it, and it seems to work. So I'm going to... Uh, grab my intake valves. I've already got this. I moved this and got it set at 30 degrees. The intake valves on a D17 are 30 degrees. Uh, I'm not sure why they did that, but that's fine. So I'm going to reface the valves and grind the seats. So I will try and get the, uh, the camera set up here so you can see it. Okay, I'm going to dress my stone before I start. going to give them a little bit of a love tap with the stone just to make sure everything is round and copacetic then grab a valve and check it get my pilot in there I could use a new stone but I don't use this enough anymore to really warrant that Oops, come on here. I came unplugged. Okay, I'm gonna get another cord. Yep. Well, that doesn't look bad. Let's go all the way around there. Let's grab the valve and check it out. Yeah, that's number one, so forward. This is the number one intake. good. That is all it took. Boy, the intakes are in really good shape on this. It's landing right about where I want it. So we'll call that one good. We'll give the number two intake a little tap here. 
check the stone. Stone looks pretty good. I'll probably dress it again after this one. looking pretty good. Okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how the valves turned out. Now one thing I don't know if I mentioned, the cylinder heads for a D17 and a WD45 are actually about three quarters of an inch taller than the older heads. Uh, they use that space I think the primary reason for doing that was to move the spark plug in closer to the center of the cylinder for more efficient uh, combustion. But anyway, uh, we'll put this to bed for now. I don't have the springs, keepers, and the retainers washed yet, so we'll put this to bed right now. I've got the pan off of my engine, so now we'll see uh, We'll see what I did 30 years ago in regard to bearings. Okay, we'll pull a rod bearing off this thing. Pull the number one off. See what we've got. It's a little rough and I don't remember if this crankshaft is standard or undersized or what. I'll pull a bearing out of here and find out. Well, let's see what we got here. Well I did put new rod bearings in it. These are marked 490 so these bearings were manufactured in April of 1990 which would which would be about right. That would put it 30 years ago. Cleavite 77s. And I do not see any undersized markings on these. Which means, leads me to believe it's probably standard. Yep, in fact, I see it right there. It's standard. So, wow. Standard crankshaft <laughs> in a uh, in something that's 60 some years old. That's pretty impressive. Now I'll put that for aside right now. I'll probably plastic age it. Let's see what kind of clearance I've got. So now we'll see whether or not I put main bearings in this thing. Well, I did not put main bearings in this thing 30 years ago. The main bearings, number one is the thrust bearing, which I had forgotten about, but the main bearings, they're Federal Mogul, uh, they're dated 766. So, ah, uh, let's see, July of 1966, this was manufactured. So it looks like in, uh, late 66 or early 67 someone overhauled this thing so doesn't look too bad there's uh one shim on each side on the mains 
Sorry about that. I ran out of battery at the end there last night. But I did uh, whip out some plastic gauge and check the clearance on my main bearings. And they're supposed to be between two and three thousandths. And uh, this checked out in excess of three thousandths. So I'm going to go ahead and put new rod and main bearings in this thing. Long as I'm at it. So that's about all I'm going to do on this thing this week. I'm about to go off and merrily haul manure for a couple days. I'll probably get back at this next week. I've got a lot of cleaning to do, probably the better part of a day cleaning stuff up. And I'm not going to video any of that, but as soon as I get to bolting together nice clean stuff, I'll probably shoot some more video. So until then, everyone be safe and we'll see you later.